apparently. Okay, so welcome to the parents that have been able to join us this morning for School Council's Assembly. So School Council are going to talk a little bit at the start about how to stay safe online. And then I'm going to give you a little bit of information as well um, to parents about how you can help children at home stay safe. So I'm going to say it over to School Council and they have been learning a little bit about this in their lunch times. And they have created some of the posters that you've seen there at the start um, that we showed you. So over to School Council. Safer Internet Day is celebrated globally in February each year to promote the safe and positive use of digital technology for children and young people. School Council are proud to be helping and educating the pupils and parents at St Mary's on how to stay safe <coughs> online. <coughs> Here at St Mary's we are very lucky because we have a range of devices such as our, our brand new iPads and our ICT suit. Uh, which we use regular, regularly to learn and have fun on. We want everyone to be safe online and we hope our posters teach you and your children how to be. Going online can be very fun. I found it especially helpful during the pandemic as it kept me connected with my friends and also allowed me to learn to access online learning. Yeah, it's all fun and games, exploring respect, re, res, respect, respect, and relationships online. If I am ever unsure about something online, I must always ask for help. We have created a poster about what to do if somebody is not being nice online. We have five, five important steps for you. Step one, tell an adult if someone is being mean to you. Step two, block them. If you don't like what they are saying, you can block them. Step three, educate yourself. The more you know, the safer you are and your child is. It's really important that parents help to educate their children about being online to help them stay safe. Step four, report them. Step five, have a safety password. Being online can be so much fun, but it can be dangerous if you don't use it safely. My top tip is to always be kind and respecting other people's boundaries. No means no. Please join us in helping to educate and teach the pupils at St Mary's School to make good and positive choices online. Thank you for listening to School Council. So I think that was a really lovely uh, introduction to our meeting. I think the children have come up with some really powerful messages there that they wanted to share. So if everybody could unmute themselves and give School Council a little clap, that would be great. School Council, do you want to come and stand up? Thank you. So if everyone wants to leave their sheets of paper at the side for it, actually there's none left on the floor, that would be great. And if you could go back to your classes, I will come and get you soon. Thank you. Now, I'll just get myself moved around a little and we'll begin. And I'll just close the door. I think as a parent myself, you know, having a message coming from the children is just so powerful. Uh, you know, the children really are interested in accessing uh, online activities and we just need to as a school um, and as a parent we just need to make sure that we understand um, how things online work and how we can best educate our children to keep them safe so there we go so i thought this was quite an interesting infographic it shows 
or all of the online apps or, or things that didn't exist in 2003. So the online world has really changed a lot um, in just under 10 years. There's so many more things that children are accessing online and uh, are actually aware of. This is also quite interesting that 65% of primary school children today are going to end up in jobs that don't exist yet. And a lot of those jobs are actually going to be technology based. So we can't specifically, I believe, teach children how to handle uh, particular tools online. But what we can do is work with them so that they can make, as the children mentioned, positive choices uh, online. Now, there was a report done a few years ago and by the Children's Commissioner, and they looked at the positives uh, and the negatives for, from children's perspectives about being online. So as you can see there, some of the positives were children can feel that they can make friends, they can talk to their family, they can feel inspired, they can learn how to do new things, and they can show their personality and share achievements. But on the flip side of, of the positive areas, there can be uh, negative tones underneath. Uh, children can be concerned about what other people will think of them online. Uh, they notice that they can see or even receive comments that might be mean. They worry even um, about their siblings and their use of social media. And they might be a bit unsure about how they can, who they can trust online. It was actually really interesting uh, yesterday I was working in year three uh, and we'd done an online safety lesson and we were actually talking about who you can trust online and one of the children made a really interesting comment because he said I know you can trust people online that are really good at the game uh, and, I, and I did understand in a way what he was com where he was coming from he believed that if somebody's really good at Roblox or, or a different game uh, they're pretty trustworthy and then we talked about being does being good at a game mean that that is a trustworthy person so there was a big conversation to be had really about what it means to be trustworthy and actually and um, we started to have a, a valuable conversation about the difference between liking someone online and actually being able to trust them now uh, we've talked about the positives about uh, or use online and children's online or digital lives. Um, there's a little boy here, he is a YouTuber. He's age seven and he's earned uh, 17.3 million a few years ago online. So, you know, he's doing really well with his online presence. Something I was also uh, really interested in yesterday with uh, the lesson I did with year threes, I asked them who they like online and they were able to tell me a massive list of YouTubers uh, that they access online. I had heard none of them, so I felt extremely uh, old, to be honest. Uh, but it was interesting uh, what kind of YouTubers that they are accessing. And I did start to think, um, do parents know that the children are accessing diff these different YouTubers and are being so um, engrossed or inspired by them? Now, this was a little quote that I found online. It says, in every aspect of development, from learning to cross the road, to ride a bike, or to swim, parents teach, guide, and support their children. It should be no different when it comes to their online lives. The best online safety strategy, regardless of age, is to explore the online world together. Talk to your child, and engage with them about what they are doing and who they are doing it with. Um, which I think is a really important uh, way of looking at it. We're not going to, I can't imagine, be able to really stop children as they grow older to access online content. We can monitor the use and we can try and make sure it's appropriate for their age. Um, but at some point, there, there is going to be a time where they can access things independently. And by that point, I think it's a, a really important that the children are educated and have lots of conversations with us in school and even with you at home uh, to engage them in thinking about 
is it appropriate? How do I feel about accessing this content? Does it make me feel safe? And does it make me feel good? So here is, we're going to look at some digital vocabulary. So um, there is digital words, words that people are using about online content. And then there is also some emoji. So I hope um, none of it offends people, but it is language that people are using online. Um, and these are just examples of the things that children might be talking about. So we might hear children talking about these words or using the emojis. And I think part of supporting children in uh, being safe is for us to have a level of understanding about what these words mean if we happen to hear our child using them or if we see our children uh, using a particular emoji and then just dig in a little deeper about, oh, what does that mean or, or what's, what context that's used in. Now, what do we know about children and technology? So we know that children are using and accessing lots of different apps these days. So these are an example of the apps that are quite popular at the moment. If I was to give you this as a quiz, I want you to just think, would you be able to name um, all of these apps? To be honest, I'm not sure that I would be able to name all of them. I might be able to, to name quite a few of them. Um, but here are the different names. Now, this app called Kick, uh, I thought it was interesting and alarming to find out that apparently people can sign up to it without verifying who they are at all. And um, they can just access it. So it can be considered quite, uh, a, a, I don't know if I should use the word dangerous or quite a, a difficult app for children to access because it's really hard for people to track who's actually accessing it. Um, so here are the age restrictions for social media platforms. So you've got 13 uh, children are uh, allowed to legally uh, set up Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, Snapchat accounts. Uh, at 16, they can set up WhatsApp groups. Now at 17, they can access Tinder. At 18, uh, they can use YouTube and Flickr. Uh, but you would say it also says that some of these apps can be accessed with parents' permission at the age of 13. Now, I know from the discussions I've had with children across school that they are actually accessing these at seven or eight. Um, and that can pose, uh, I guess, a bit of a, a safety risk, really. Um, uh, especially if there aren't parental permissions in place, I guess, for the content that they're seeing on these different apps. Now, again, this uh, infographic here was from a report that was produced about children's social media use. And it's saying here that if you choose an age group that you're interested in, you've got three to four year olds or five to seven year olds or eight to 11 or 12 to 15, it breaks down their usage of screen time. So five to seven, five percent of those children have smartphones. Then by the age of eight to 11, that turns into 35 percent. And then by the time they're 12 or 15, 83 percent of children will have uh, smartphones. And at that age of the teenage years, 53% uh, will use a mobile phone to go online. So they do, they're accessing this online content all the time when they're out and about because the phone obviously can be carried with them anywhere. And it's really interesting that over three quarters of them or nearly three quarters of them will have a social media profile. So the Children's Commissioner broke this down a bit further into um, how often the children are accessing uh, the different apps and they came up with problem apps. And we can consider why some of this online content or apps can be problematic. And a lot of it really boils down to we are engaged in a battle for our attention. So the social media and tech companies have one goal 
and that's to keep us using the technology and uh, to keep us watching it. Now, I'm not going to show you the video uh, because it is very hard hitting really, but if anybody wants to afterwards watch, there is a YouTube um, video that's very popular at the minute. It's called Bedtime Stories. And it's a video about the notion of children going to bed with tablets and with the mobile phones and basically being followed around all day and last thing before they go to sleep um, by the, their phones and accessing this content online. And it raised quite a big discussion about harmful content and how that can impact uh, on children's mental health really and impact on their sleep and how it, it could be the last thing they're seeing going to bed. Um, so that was an interesting, really interesting video uh, that you can access uh, yourselves at home if you'd like to. But if we're looking at the impact of social media, apparently Snapchat, I've never used it myself, uh, but it turns conversations into streaks uh, and Instagram, I know can really glorify this picture perfect life and it can really uh, damage children's self-worth if they think they have to look or lead uh, their lives in a particular way and, and if they feel that they don't. Um, Facebook, uh, you know, does connect people, but at the same time, there is conversations around how genuine the connection is um, and also how authentic the connection is really. Uh, YouTube obviously allows children to play videos or watch videos and access them, but you kind of get into the spiral of one video leading to another for a long period of time. Games these days also have this gamification uh, element to them where children uh, get a, a shot of dop dopamine. So that's something in our bodies which make us feel really good. And it's the same with uh, Facebook and Instagram if we get likes makes us feel amazing but on the same side of things if we don't get those likes uh, it can make us feel uh, really sad or you know have a, a negative impact on our mental health with the gamification it it really pulls children in to, to keep playing to get the next thing and I know that some of the children in school that I've been speaking to are even saying that for their birthdays they would like to buy different things in this virtual world um, so they're not physical things, but uh, th this virtual life has really pulled them in so much that they're wanting to spend their birthday money on these things. Um, so these are just conversations, really, that uh, we could have with children uh, about how these things make you feel online and whether they enjoy it. And if they don't like it, we could delve in a bit deeper as into what don't you like? And is there anything I can do to help? So the Snapchat streak, um, apparently uh, the streak keeps going uh, when people send back and forth messages to each other and it gets to the point where you don't want to, to miss out on your streak because you get emojis, uh, special emojis if it lasts for a long period of time. So the children feel they have to keep accessing it to build up uh, their emojis and I'm guessing share how many emojis they've got with their friends. Um, I'm sure people will will be aware of this, um, but like we've touched on earlier, Instagram does have an impact and can have an impact on people, children's self-esteem. Uh, there is the idea of fake news, and I think, and the idea that uh, some of the content online isn't real and has been made up. However, if children haven't had a conversation in school or at home based on the fact that not everything online is authentic they could believe what they're reading so again you know that's a really useful conversation and I think it's actually a harder conversation to have with children as we go along now and um, some of you might have heard of the deep fake where pictures can be used and superimposed on faces so there there is one of Tom Cruise and it isn't Tom Cruise at all it's somebody else uh, a young fella in America that's um, pretending to be him, but he's managed to superimpose Tom Cruise's face on, so it looks like Tom Cruise is speaking to us. So that uh, the deep fakes really make uh, understanding what is fake and what is 
not thick, uh, difficult. So we need to start looking at where our information comes from. Is that a trustworthy website? Is it the BBC is a trustworthy website? Because we know that uh, that content will be um, true and accurate as, as much as it can be. So that is the YouTube video, like I said, that you may want to look at. Um, and I did think it really brought home the importance of children having phones and it, it following them all around or tablets and it going into their bedroom with them. So, it, you know, as they're going to sleep at night and they still have this pinging at the side or this information is still coming right into their bedroom. So we know that online and the digital world has benefits. We know that there are also negative parts to it. So what can you do as a parent? What can we do as parents? And I think the most important thing you can do uh, is to support the child. And it's just about being a little bit nosy. Trying to engage with them, what it is that they're doing, seeing if you can use the technology with them. Um, I have to say, uh, this one is a bit tricky. Do not become a sharent, lead by example. Um, and I guess that means if you want to as a family, uh, you can come up with your own rules about what is acceptable use of technology at home. Um, I know that we try to make sure that we don't have our phones at the dinner table um, and that phones go away at a certain time every night and that uh, we make sure and spend time building connection. And we can talk to other parents about any issues that they have noticed. And I think that's really powerful in a school community because often children are obviously friends in school. So one child might go home and tell a parent something uh, that they have, that they're wanting to access. Uh, and that, that parent can have a discussion with their child, but sharing that information with other parents could mean that other parents become aware that there is a potential issue and start to educate themselves or explore it a little bit in their own time. And there's also this idea of being open-minded uh, to technology that we don't really know the different apps that are going to come out or the different ways that children in the future will use technology and we can be aware of the positives and the negatives at the same time. I thought this was a really nice little video oops, uh, through the Safer Internet website and it's just about sharing the digital world together. Let me show you. There are many things thought that was was quite a nice little video to show us of the role that we can play as parents of just being supportive and involved really in uh, what children are doing so this was the chief medical officer's advice for parents uh, about children and young people's screen time and use of social media sleep matters getting enough good quality sleep is very important Leave phones outside the bedroom when it is bedtime. Sharing sensibly. Talk about sharing photos and information online and how photos and words are sometimes manipulated. 
parents and carers should never assume that children are happy for their photos to be shared for everyone when in doubt just don't upload it education matters and this is you know big part of our part make sure you and your children are aware of and abide by the school's policy and screen time but i think education in the bigger content context um, is being aware of what is online uh, and what children could access or what they are accessing keep moving everyone should take a break after a couple of hours sitting or using a screen it's good to get up and move about uh, safety when out and about advise children to put the screens away if they're crossing the road or doing an activity that needs their full attention talking helps talk with children about using their screens and what they are watching a change and this is very important a change in behavior can be a sign that they're distressed make sure they know that they can always speak to you and another responsible adult if they feel uncomfortable with screen or social media use Family time, screen free meal times are a good idea. You can enjoy, oh, you can enjoy face to face conversation with adults, giving their full attention to children. Use helpful phone features. Some devices and platforms have special features. Using these features can help keep track of how much time you uh, and with their permission, your children are spending looking at screen or social media at home. You can, for younger children, I would definitely suggest you having that conversation and reading books that support it. Um, older children, I think this is interesting here that instead of just consuming this online world, can they create things? I know the children in here absolutely love to create books, um, stories. They could, and the children are really interested in coding so we can channel their interests so online so that um, they are learning and enjoying things in a positive way. And we can be aware of parental controls on our phones or the children's phones if they have them. And we can be aware of the restrictions, for example, on gaming platforms as well. So if you uh, need any extra support or you'd like extra help, uh, school are always here for you to contact. Uh, there are the NSPCC is another um, really good place to go to find out about how to support children online. So is the UK Safer Internet Centre, and that's where the video came from that I've just showed you. The two most important useful things, though, in day-to-day -day use, I think, are Common Sense Media, and I'll show you what it does. So Common Sense Media, and this will be the end of our presentation soon, so I hope I've not kept you too long. Uh, Common Sense Media will allow you to type in uh, Minecraft and then it will give you information about the game so it'll say age six plus parents are saying that children are using it from six plus um, and it tells you a little bit more about the game and if there's anything that stands out that could worry you as a parent and it tells you um, a little bit more information about it there and there's reviews from parents so I think day-to-day -day use that's a really good one to use the other thing that I think is good is reporting really harmful comments and that mm -hmm. is this website where you can actually report something that you are concerned about uh, other children accessing online Miss Hughes, I was just going to say, um, I think you yes. were trying to show us that, but you probably you needed to stop sharing your PowerPoint and share the screen if you were showing us what it looked like. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Mrs. Hurley. Let's see. So first one was common sense media. So if we type in Minecraft, it will tell you the age range for using Minecraft. So it suggests eight plus. You've got information here where parents are saying the age that their children are genuinely using that app or game. Gives you examples of what the interface looks like. Anything that stands out in the game that you could be maybe concerned about. And it gives you parent reviews. The other thing that I thought was really useful is this website reporting harmful content where you can actually click on report and you can report something um, that you are worried about or concerned about online. So hopefully that's been of use. Um, like I say, school is, always has an open door. So if you are concerned about anything or you're unsure about anything online, please let us know. 
Um, and, you know, we want to do the best for the children. The, all year groups are accessing uh, information about online safety as part of the PSE curriculum, the RSE curriculum and the computing curriculum. And um, so, we're, you know, we're really taking it seriously. We want children to have fun online. but We want them to know how to stay safe and to have those important conversations that help them to do that, really. So thank you very much for coming this morning. Like I said, I hope it was useful and see you soon. Thank you, Miss Hughes. Bye. Thank you.